Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. My name is Ashton, and I'm the founder and a product architect of Open Mesh Network. I'm a big fan of uh, Chainlink, especially Chainlink events, because of the builder's energy. So I'm very excited to be here. Today, I want to talk to you about decent, uh, danger of centralization and importance of decentralization. If you, gig, if you Google the most significant threats for humanity, you'll find roughly three main scenarios. Nuclear war between powerful nations, asteroid destroying our planet, and a large-scale pandemic. But I think there's one more. It is monopoly and centralization of digital superpower. If you look at the world knowledge distribution today, the majority owns by a few corporations. If you, we use cloud pretty much for everything. Most businesses, even governments, use cloud. But who owns cloud? Who owns the biggest IT infrastructure? The very same companies who owns the world's data. How about AI? The very same companies also happen to have the biggest AI capabilities today. And they are all in a race to prove who's bigger and better. The fact is we have roughly four large corporations control the world's data, world IT infrastructure, and has the largest IT infrastructure capabilities, and we're supposed to trust them. So the trust itself is built into the people and the brands. We have been told that's how, the, that's how the world works. Corporation may say, don't be evil. Government will say they have plans for worst case. But I think it's more, it's, more, it's more complicated than that. I also think what's going on today is kind of a repeat from the past. If you look at ancient times, empires and kingdoms ruled the world. They kept secret, uh, centralized power, monopoly, and made most important decisions behind closed doors, regardless of the outcome. We think we are, we are better off today, but I find the structure still exists, hidden beneath us. In olden days, Ottoman and Roman empires only controlled certain parts of the world, but I think today, Monopolies like Web2, they have more influence than distribution than more, most of the, the empires combined. For me, this highly monopolized power is a perfect combination for disaster. It should be a checkmate for humans, and we should, we should take it very seriously. It's not only good, bad for people, but also it's a, it's a threat for democracy. So the question we should ask ourselves, if we live for another 100 years or more, become type one civilization, and we're gonna are we gonna have a Google at a solar, solar system scale? To me, we are heading that way. It seems we are heading that way. From a democratic point of view, a small group of people don't get to decide what is good for society. We should share that right. Big corporations assume they have that right and run with it, but we shouldn't give, the, we shouldn't give that uh, right by default. That's why de decentralization is very important. I envision a world where the trust is built into the design, not into the brands or people who are running it. We should have technologies that are immutable by design and verified by widely distributed independent verifiers. When I looked at public in networks like Bitcoin, I find them very interesting and fascinating because for the first time in history, we have a self-evolving and self-governing public infrastructure that is available to anyone and not owned or controlled by government or corporation. This is why I was drawn into Web3 in the first place. I was so excited and inspired by the hope that we can demonstrate democracy and freedom using technology and innovation. It was very beautiful. But the problem is the centralization problem is repeated in Web3. Many, many Web3 projects choose centralized cloud providers like AWS to host their critical infrastructure and run nodes because of the convenience. But if you build an AWS, where's the decentralization? When I started OpenMash in late 2020, Web3 monopolies like AWS had less than 40% market share of Web3. But today, it's more than 80%. Maybe who knows, in a few years down the track, they might reach 90%. The very same, they monopolize Web2. This should be, very, should be a very big concern to all of us. The other point, 
The asset managers who own the Web2 monopolies also happen to be the largest crypto custodians today. So think about it. So in my opinion, decentralization has been compromised. That's why we should start from the bottom. That's why, why infrastructure is so important and critical to keep the Web3 decentralized. And we should be very careful about the design principles. I think we should have open source and decentralized infrastructure, cryptographically guaranteed. Verification and outcome has to be built into the design. So when I left Phantom in 2019, I got a small team together, started experimenting with a few ideas around decentralized cloud networks. The goal was to build a tiny version of decentralized AWS. For many years, I've been a big fan of torrent networks because BigTorrent, networks like BigTorrent, it's amazing, it has amazing ability to share large files without a bandwidth constraints. The network is free, anyone can access, as long as you have internet and a computer. So I thought, what if, instead of sharing movies and, and maybe songs, if we could run a compute workloads? Also, I think the function and the utility of a Web3 wallet, hardware wallet specifically, so the only person who can access your crypto is you. These, are, these were the fundamental design principles we took as inspiration to design and build Open Mesh Network. So what is Open Mesh? Open Mesh is a decentralized cloud and a data network. It is permissionless, permissionless network, meaning there is no KYC, no registration or license required to access it. Like other public networks, there is no company or CEO behind it. It is open source and is available to anyone. So our first use case was a decentralized hosting service, where you can host a simple website, attach a database, secure with Ethereum wallet, kind of like a building immutable hosting service. Fast forward, we are, we are working in multiple infrastructure service, especially like decentralized virtual machines, node as a service, compute and storage, decentralized databases, you can also run like game servers, or you can build apps with Chainlink CCIP. Our goal is to combine the best of traditional clouds and distributed networks into a single solution. We are building full stack tools designed for developers and public blockchains. Now, if you compare the centralized cloud, you need an email, credit card, and your service agreement is tied to a state or a government with backdoors. And all it's managed by a middleman. They can deny access to the service. You need their permission to access the service. With OpenMesh, there's no corporation or foundation behind it. You own your data. You own your infrastructure. Your Ethereum wallet is the key for everything. You have Web3, we ha you have Web3 authentication as the first layer of defense before getting to Web2 Web securities. So the only way to shut someone to shut down your service is to compromise your Web3 wallet. Instead of using service agreements in Web2 form, we use smart contracts. In this last six months, we've, our focus has been providing a better, faster, and more affordable infrastructure, bring that into Web3. Our re resource aggregator protocol aggregates computing, storage, GPU, and bandwidth from around the world, bring that into Web3. I'm proud to say we have one of the largest infrastructure aggregation capabilities in the world today. Similar way how Airbnb disrupted hotel industry, we apply to the microservice and infrastructure industry. Instead of relying on a few providers, we enable everyone to be part of it. This way we can cut down infrastructure costs up to 80% while keeping it more decentralized. Recently we partnered up with large data centers and bare metal providers like Equinix, High Velocity, and Volta, bring the most affordable physical infrastructure for Web3. I think many Web3 uh, decentralized cloud projects failed because they started with the grand vision of peer-to-peer -peer computing first. Even though we have that in our roadmap, we chose to start with the data centers and user-centric hardware first, which I think has a higher rate of being adopted and used because of the practicality of performance and reliability. Don't get me wrong, it, has been, it hasn't been easy. For the last three and a half years, um, we've done lots of experiments. Most failed, but we found some promising solutions. To me, Web3 infrastructure today is like a dial-up. 
our goal is to bring, introduce fiber. So the innovation behind our network is Xnode. Xnode is a modular infrastructure orchestrator. You can build, configure, manage all your services in one place. Xnode is a modular, um, modular architecture you can actually build and deploy locally, or you can actually push that into bare metal, or even in a public cloud. It's also designed to manage your services, network resources, like computing, storage, bandwidth. It's kind of like a, a multi-tiered, decentralized microservice architecture. You can split your Xnode into smaller units. We call it Xnode units. And you can, you can run application services in parallel. For example, you can host a website on one unit, and another one you can run Ethereum node. Remaining, you can donate into the Open Mesh network to get paid. Another important component of Xnode is the Xnode Studio. It's a web-based console, comes with hundreds of free infrastructure templates. We treat infrastructure like Lego blocks, which means you can build infrastructure like a plug and play, saving tons of time. For example, if you want to run your own Ethereum node, connect to a front end, and you can do that by using just simple two templates. If you want a, if you want a more complex uh, use case, you can pull data from a popular DeFi application, run analytics locally, or push your Web2 data into Web2 uh, inter interfaces like Snowflakes or Databricks using a drag and drop builder without worrying about data normalization or compatibility. You can also deploy, deploy AI application with a fixed computing environment and its install observability in less than 10 minutes. So funny enough, our OpenMesh YouTube account was shut down yesterday. I'm not kidding. So it's kind of like a perfect timing. So I asked my team to use one of the open source media streaming templates that we have to start our own YouTube service called OpenStream so no one can shut down. For the last 10 years, I've been, ha I've been having so many centralized services like YouTube denied services. With Xnode, you can simply connect your wallet, manage your data, applications, infrastructure, and deploy all, all, everything in one place. The other cool thing is the Xnode is also ERC721. So if you want to swap your ownership, your entire infrastructure, you can do that very easily. Imagine someone building a Web3 game in a marketplace and monetize it for a while, running from your bedroom, and decide to, tell you, decide to sell your entire business and infrastructure to someone. With Xnode, you can do that by simply listing your NFT on OpenSea. Being able to swap ownership without a middleman can be quite powerful. Let's talk about the network economic model. We charge 15% computing and storage instead of charging dollars or crypto. 10% will be allocated for run OpenMesh core, consensus, and OpenMesh Oracle networks. So by default, every Xnode user becomes an OpenMesh validator. They, they earn validator nodes. They, they earn validator rewards. So all Xnode users get the best of the both worlds. Out of 15%, 5% we take for OpenMesh Cloud. So the more users we have, the more resources we collect. Now, I kept the best for the last. This is something I'm, I'm really, really excited about. The decentralized service mesh protocol. Let me break it down. So if you gather the old servers around the world and pile up into a one, one location, it will look like this. It will be taller than the, the tallest building in the world. According to our research, approximately 78% of, of users duplicate their cloud operations building the same compute, storage, and services repeatedly. It's a such a waste of resources, especially real estate and energy. It's like having a five-door car, but you're the one, only one driving it, even though it has a capacity for five people. If you remove the duplicates, this is how much you, you need to power the entire global demand for the, for the 2024. So imagine you can rent your common workloads and outputs and pay a fraction instead of running everything yourself, especially paying premium. So this concept called service mesh, this is the next, next evolution of microservice architecture. The reason why I'm excited about this, because centralized service mesh can be, 
can have limit limitations, but decentralized service mesh can have an amazing effect, especially when it's scaled. So open mesh decentralized service mesh will enable decentralized service discovery, communication, and orchestration without a central control point. This allows individual organizations to run microservice, microservices called open mesh, uh, mesh workers and offer that to the world. Our open observability, pro observability protocol will display the most used infrastructure on the network with on-chain stamp. Now, all of a sudden, popular infrastructure and services on demand will get attention, and you can, attract, you can attra interact with it by staking it or pledging it. This can be quite powerful for a decentralized networks, especially decentralized ecosystems. Now, innovations like this cannot be achieved by ourselves. That's why we are super excited to work with Chainlink. I don't think pe many people realize the power, the true power behind CCIP. Because Web3 ecosystems don't talk to each other natively or by default. CCIP enable that sec securely. For me, it's like one of the greatest innovation after DeFi. CCIP kind of a unified method to interact Web3. So if you're building dApps services using CCIP, you still have to host your website or maybe front end, or maybe you want to cache your data locally because you can't run everything on chain. So instead of using AWS, consider using Open Mesh. To accelerate this whole new ecosystem, Open Mesh announced a $100 million giveaway to Web3 industry for the next 12 months. Out of that largest, out of the, out of that 100 million, largest allocation will go to Chainlink. So together, we can build interoperable cross-chain cross -chain trustless, e trustless ecosystem. To, 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 to me, today, Web3, decentralized Web3 ecosystem is only 70% decentralized. Inno innovations like this, collaborations like this, we might be able to push our industry for 90% or more decentralized. Who knows, we might see 90% or more decentralized apps and services for the first time in Web3 history. So next year, I call it the era of decentralization. Thank you. <laughs>